As for Patrick Harvey, he was sitting by himself at Gryfinder table. He had never had friends before, save for Agnes, Nicholas, Jonathan, and Adrian, nor had he gone to school. For the first time in his life, Patrick found himself regretting not sneaking off to school while he was still living with the Dursleys. Agnes noticed him and said, Are you okay? I wish I could be okay, but I'm not, said Patrick. Right now, I don't know what to do or how to fit in with the other children here. I've never even gone to school, nor do I know how to properly function in a classroom. I should have known that coming here was a bad idea. Well, I don't know about that, but all I know is that you don't have to go through it alone, said Agnes. Not when you have me and the other students to protect you. Also, no one knows the truth about Dumbledore and his evil intentions regarding you. But I'm not the hero, Patrick snapped. I will never be the hero. In fact, I'm not sure if Harry Potter is meant to be the hero either, but I bet that he can stand up to Dumbledore and not be fooled by his lies. Is that true? said a random student. And they say that Harry Potter is the true hero, said Patrick. I mean, Agnes, you heard what Jonathan and Adrian told Harry about surviving a magical curse that kills all others who have had the same curse put on them, including Harry's parents. How do we know that this wasn't a conspiracy orchestrated by Dumbledore to manipulate Harry into becoming the hero that the wizarding world doesn't need? Agnes was about to respond when she looked up and saw Amber and Willa coming towards them. Amber said, I couldn't help but overhear your conversation, but did you say that this was all a plot created by Professor Dumbledore to fool the wizarding world? Well, it has to be, or else Patrick wouldn't have been forced to play the part of Harry Potter for the last ten years, said Agnes. And that's why hardly anyone trusts Dumbledore nowadays, Willa said as she nodded in agreement. It's just too convenient that Harry survived a curse that technically should have killed him. I mean, who's to say that Dumbledore himself didn't orchestrate it all to fulfill his own agenda? We would have to drop everything just to stop him before he gains more power and completely manipulates the wizarding world. Patrick frowned as he said, Well, I'm not sure who Dumbledore thinks he is, but all I know is that he ruined my life and I'm not going to let him get away with it. And how are you going to stop him, said Willa. Albus Dumbledore is very rich and very powerful, and I'm sure that he must have paid the Dursley family well to keep you with them. And I'm not even going to mention that he tried to force you to stay with a family that despised you until you vaporized them, said Amber. I mean, was Dumbledore trying to make you be his promised hero? No, said Willa. There's no way in hell that I'm ever going to be the promised hero. In his eyes, no girl can be the promised hero, no matter how progressive society has become during the last 100 years. Well, What's wrong with having a girl being the promised hero, said Agnes. I mean, between Harry Potter and Patrick Harvey, I can't tell whose life was ruined more. Plus, why would Dumbledore want his hero to be an orphan? After all, there are so many people out there who could legitimately play the role of the hero, and no one would be the wiser. How many other orphans could Dumbledore pay to do his bidding? Patrick pondered this for a moment then said, well, my life was ruined when the Dursleys kept me away from the outside world and never really loved me. You mean to tell me that anyone who suffers from a sad childhood and has no parents should be the hero? Are you kidding me? Patrick glanced at Willa, who seemed to understand his dilemma, and said, I understand that you must have suffered unfairly before Dumbledore took you in, but do you really think that you could be the best hero that Dumbledore needs? Not that I know of, but I have been attending classes at Hogwarts since I was a child, said Willa. I know what Dumbledore is really like, and he's not the type of person who you should be trusting. He has a hidden agenda, and I've seen things that make me question his true intentions. I can't say much more, but just be careful who you trust at Hogwarts. There's more going on behind the scenes than most people realize. 
Patrick nodded, knowing that while Dumbledore had ruined his life by forcing him to play the part of Harry Potter's role as the boy who lived, Harry Potter himself had the ability to destroy Dumbledore's plans for the both of them. But Patrick also knew that he couldn't let Harry do that alone. They were in this together, and they would have to work together to take down Dumbledore and his manipulative schemes. Patrick clenched his fists, determined to fight back and take control of his own destiny, no matter what it took. And with Harry by his side, he knew they could overcome anything. At the same time, Harry said to Philip and Eleanor, did you guys know anything about Hogwarts before you came here? He looked around the room, wondering why he had never thought to ask Hagrid or Nicholas about Hogwarts before going to the school. It would have saved him hours of fruitless speculation. As Philip and Eleanor shared a look, anticipation filled the air, adding mystery and excitement to their conversation. Harry's question prompted them to explore shared experiences, strengthening their bond amidst Hogwarts' magical atmosphere. Not really, said Philip. My parents moved us here this past summer, and my mom was searching for the nice schools for me to attend when she found out about Hogwarts. The mention of Hogwarts, however, has given me some questions that I'm not sure if I should bother asking, if you know what I mean. Well, my siblings have been going to Hogwarts since my family moved to London a few years ago, said Eleanor. Most of them are in Hufflepuff, which speaks volumes about their loyalty and dedication. Well, Chauncey went to Gryfinder even though he has what most non-magical folk would call autism. Even though he was allowed to be here, most of the Gryffindors have gone out of their way to make him feel unwelcome, so he spends most of his time with the Slytherins. Given that Gryffindors and Slytherins usually don't get along, the fact that all of Slytherin House has accepted Chauncey has made everyone else feel uneasy. To Harry, she said, and what about your family? Did any of them go to Ravenclaw? Or if not, which house did they go to? I'm quite curious to learn more about your family's magical history, given that I've never heard of the Potters, or you until recently. Well, both my parents were in Gryfinder, even though I wonder why my mother never went into Ravenclaw, since she was smart, said Harry. I can't help but wonder why I would want to be in Gryfinder to begin with, as I have no qualities that would make a perfect Gryfinder. Sometimes, I wonder the same thing, Professor Snape said softly, his voice laced with a hint of regret as he approached Harry. Your mother could have been one of the smartest witches of her era, but she made one stupid mistake, and that was being with your father, the worst sort of bully to ever come out of Gryfinder, leaving behind a leg key of arrogance and mischief. I can only hope that you do not turn out to be like him, that you will choose to rise above the shadows of his past and carve your own path, one defined by courage and integrity. Unfortunately, I didn't know him, since he's dead, said Harry, his voice tinged with a hint of sorrow. In fact, I don't think I've met anyone who knew my parents, save for my uncle Carlisle Evans, and he had some not so very nice things to say about my father, mostly how he should have married Shannon Claire Trickenberg instead of his sister Lily, who ended up becoming my mom. I wonder why my dad and Shannon didn't end up together, yet I can't imagine him being with anyone else but my mom. I could, said Professor Snape, his voice low and calculating as he surveyed the situation. After all, Shannon had been the only person among us who could tell James what to do, as she possessed the ability to decipher people's thoughts with such precision that it often seemed as though she could anticipate his every move. But at the end of our time at Hogwarts, James was starting to listen to Lily more than he was listening to Shannon, much to the chagrin of every decent student. Of course, James decided to marry Lily instead of Shannon, which made many people furious. As almost the entire population of magical England had expected James to marry Shannon, as she was part of the Trickenberg family, the most powerful magical family in the world, him marrying Lily was seen as a betrayal of tradition and expectation. While whispers and disapproving glances seemed to follow James and Lily everywhere they went, there was only one person who wanted that marriage to happen, and it was none other than Albus Dumbledore. 
and I'm sure that he had played a pivotal role in orchestrating their marriage, as James and Lily were never supposed to be together. Harry frowned as he thought about the implications of his family's hidden past. On one hand, he was the product of what had appeared to be a loving marriage, as evident by his parents giving up their lives for him. Yet, he had a strong feeling that he wasn't supposed to exist, not when his father was supposed to marry a magical princess. This unexpected revelation made him feel uneasy, as if he was nothing more than an ordinary boy who wasn't meant to be a hero. Just then, Snape said to him, If you're going through this existential crisis, just remember that everything that you were forced to endure can ultimately be traced back to the manipulative machinations of none other than Albus Dumbledore. He had orchestrated a series of events that led to you being born, and then he had your parents killed once they had served their purpose. In doing that, he forced you to become his chosen hero, a heavy burden you were never meant to bear, but now you must carry. But if you want to talk more about your father and how he destroyed my life, you can find me in my laboratory. But I will warn you that once you learn the truth about your parents, you won't be able to unlearn it. At the same time, a stranger was watching the festivities with a stern look on his face. From what he had seen, Harry Potter had defied Albus Dumbledore's plans for his life and went into a different house. This could mean several problems for the entire wizarding world, all which could change things. Nevertheless, the stranger smiled, knowing that no matter what happened next, Harry Potter had now changed his entire story, for better or for worse. 